Hey, this is Cat by Cam, and one of my absolute favorite things to do in Japan is to soak away my stresses at a local bathhouse. For me, they're the ultimate way to relax, reflect, and rejuvenate. If you've never been to an onsen or a sento before, however, you may find the idea a bit intimidating, as not only is there the language barrier, but also the rules and customs that come along with bathhouse culture. This video, with some help from sometimes appropriate, sometimes wildly inaccurate AI-generated illustrations, will take you through what you need to know about using Japanese bathhouses. Whether you're popping quickly into a tiny neighborhood sento, or you're spending the day touring an entire onsen town. But first, what's the difference between a sento and an onsen? The kanji used in the word sento combined to mean paid bath, and the word itself simply means bathhouse, as opposed to onsen, which means hot spring. A sento then heats up regular water, whereas an onsen draws some or all of its water from a natural geothermally heated hot spring source, of which there are something like 27,000 in Japan. You'll come across both traveling around the country and every type of bathhouse has its own appeal. A traditional sento, for instance, is where you would see a giant Mount Fuji mural on the back wall. These establishments are generally small and utilitarian, with the men's and women's areas divided by a low wall in the center of the room. In terms of layout, they typically have a few stalls for washing and only one or two baths to soak in, and sometimes a small sauna. A super sento, on the other hand, is much larger, with a wide array of baths and facilities like saunas, relaxation rooms, and restaurants. A sento is somewhere you go to get clean and have a quick soak. A super sento is somewhere you can spend the day. Onsen vary just as drastically in size, from tiny single bath establishments to large complexes. Thankfully, the basic rules of etiquette are all the same. Before we get to those, however, let's run through the process of actually entering a bathhouse. The first thing you do after walking in the door is to take off your shoes. These typically go in a shoe locker, often using 100 yen coins, which you'll get back later, but sometimes the bathhouse might provide a bag to put them in. Most bathhouses will have a vending machine to buy an entry ticket, and Google Translate is your friend here if there's no English, but if not, you can go up to the counter and say, Hitori onegaishimasu, one person please, or Futari onegaishimasu, two people please. Entry to a bathhouse can be anywhere from 400 or 500 yen for a basic sento through to 3,000 yen for the full spirited away treatment. The vast majority of bathhouses have you pay on entry, but some larger places will give you a wristband you can use to pay for drinks and things, and then you settle the balance as you leave. The major wildcard when going to a bathhouse is whether they provide towels or not. The standard loadout is to have a small towel that you carry while bathing and a larger towel for drying yourself when you're done. More expensive options almost always provide these, but more basic establishments usually don't. I typically carry towels with me, but if you don't do that and the bathhouse doesn't provide them, then you'll need to either rent towels or sometimes even buy towels. Typically, it's a pretty small additional fee. Most places usually also provide soap and shampoo, but sometimes, particularly for smaller sento, you might need to bring your own or buy some. Use of the sauna can sometimes be an additional charge too. Once you've paid, you'll go through the relevant curtain. Often, but not always, blue for men and pink or red for women, each with the appropriate kanji, but if you're in any doubt, just ask, and into the changing area. Some fancier places may also have the option to pick up a yukata before going through, which will then give you something to wear outside the bathing area when you're finished. Onsen hotels also simplify the process a heap, as you can just leave your room wearing a yukata and carrying towels if needed. Once you're in the male or female changing area, pick a locker or go and find your locker if you're assigned one by the front counter. Strip naked and put all your clothes and stuff into your locker, aside from your hand towel if you've been given one already. The locker key will likely be on a stretchy wristband, so put that on your wrist or slide it up your arm. If there are no lockers, incidentally, there'll be baskets for you to leave your clothes in. And now you're ready for the bathing area, so grab your hand towel and go on through. Before you can soak, you need to get clean. The bare minimum is to either rinse off at a shower or to scoop buckets of water over yourself, either from the Kakayu station at the entrance, this literally means throw hot water, by the way, or if that's not an option, using water from the baths themselves. It's best, however, particularly as a foreigner, to clean yourself properly, so the rows of individual stations as you enter will be your first port of call. Some bathhouses have shelves in this area where you can leave your large towel and toiletries, but I usually just leave that stuff in my locker. Sit yourself down at a station on one of the little stools. In front of you will most likely be a plastic bowl or wooden bucket, a tap, a detachable shower head, and a range of plastic bottles with body wash, shampoo, conditioner, and possibly face wash and shaving cream. Clean yourself thoroughly and rinse away all the suds. You can also use the face washer to give yourself a good scrub, but be sure to rinse it and wring it out thoroughly when you're done. 
Once you're clean and sud free, splash clean water on the chair you've been sitting on as a courtesy and head over to the baths. Oh, and if you have long hair, tie it up. Getting your hair in the water is a no-no. Now comes the main attraction, testing out all the facilities. Every bathhouse I've been to has a different mix. Some baths are about the material of the bath itself. Some are about the mineral composition of the water. Some play specifically with temperature and others are all about ambience. Let's quickly run through some of the main types of baths you'll encounter. Rotten Buro simply means open air bath and is typically one of the main attractions if a bathhouse has one. Sometimes these have spectacular views or are ensconced in a gorgeous garden, other times they're just open to the sky. These baths are made from hinoki, a cypress native to Japan and have a strong soothing smell. Tsuboyu are ceramic one person pots and are among my favourite ways to bathe. Whether you're sitting with your legs pressed against the inside of the tub or you're dangling various limbs above the rim, I find these incredibly comfortable to relax in. Many bathhouses will have individual bays with underwater jets to pummel your back and legs. Sometimes you're reclining or sitting, other times you're standing in deep water. Ever soaked in water infused with coffee, hibiscus, green tea? How about cherry blossoms? Many onsen and supercento have a bath which they use for different infusions and aromas. While you can certainly come to a bathhouse for a schwitz, carbonated baths are more about enjoying a spritz. The fine bubbles throughout produce a light tingling sensation on the skin. These are super relaxing. Silk baths are similar, but with such incredibly fine bubbles that the water turns milky white. As the name suggests, these baths leave your skin feeling silky. Radium baths use spring water that's slightly radioactive, but is purported to have numerous health benefits. Neko Robi are stone or tile beds covered by an inch or so of warm water, letting you lie down and enjoy the contrast between the water and the air. If you see a bath with narrow white rectangular strips mounted under the water, you may be in for a shock, literally. Known as electric baths, these have a low-level electric current running through them, which is supposedly good for things like rheumatism. Personally, I hate the sensation, and this is the only bath in the world of onsen that I always avoid. Most bathhouses have some kind of sauna, and bigger complexes sometimes have two or three. The standard is a dry sauna with the temperature set somewhere between 80 and 100 degrees Celsius. Wet saunas are also popular and have lower temperatures but really high humidity and sometimes herbal infusions. Mizuburo is the cold water tub and while it may sound strange, to me it's the most integral part of any bathhouse. Why? Because it's only so long you can enjoy a super scorching sauna or a steaming hot bath before you need to cool off. Plunging into the Mizuburo is like hitting the reset button on your onsen experience, only better. If you drop your body temperature low enough, you can hop back into the hottest of hot baths, and it'll take quite a while for your body to properly register the heat again. One tip, it's a good idea to acclimatize a little by splashing some of this water over yourself before hopping in, because the best Mizuburo are quite cold, 13 to 15 degrees Celsius. And if submersing yourself in cold water is a bit much, Keep an eye out for plastic chairs or recliners around the bathhouse because relaxing in one of these serves a similar purpose. So those are a few of the most popular baths you'll come across, but the world of Japanese bathhouses is incredibly broad. So there's plenty more out there, from mud baths and highly alkaline baths to water heavy in iron, sulfur and sulfate. But how to ensure you have the most harmonious experience possible? Well, in terms of etiquette, here are a few things to keep in mind. If your onsen has a sauna, there'll generally be mats, rubber or cloth to grab as you go in, so do so and sit on the mat. There may also be sauna hats, but these are optional. When you leave, there'll either be a basket or some kind of rack to put them on. I always give my mat a rinse before leaving it, taking care not to get any of the water in the bath. And on the subject of saunas, always rinse yourself to wash away the sweat after coming out, either by scooping water out of a bath, ducking under a shower or using the kakayu at the entrance. Don't dunk your head under the water at any point, even if you see Japanese people doing it. And don't put the hand washer in the water either, it's considered unhygienic. You'll notice the locals balance it on their heads or tie it around their heads while soaking. I usually just leave it by the side of the bath I'm using. You can use it to wipe sweat from your brow if you need to, or to cover yourself while walking around if you're feeling modest. The most important use for the small towel, however, is to dry yourself off a bit before you go back into the changing room. It's poor form to walk into that area dripping wet, so use the hand towel to get excess moisture off before you go and grab your larger towel. 
And in general, be respectful, keep conversations to a minimum, and if in doubt, follow the lead of the locals. Observing what other people do is a good way to pick up on other aspects of onsen culture. Once back in the changing room and dry, you can avail yourself of any of the other facilities, like hair dryers, combs, cotton swabs, scales, and so on. Almost all bathhouses sell plain and flavoured milk too, which is a long established tradition that dates back to the post-war era, in a time when households didn't have a bath or a refrigerator, so Japanese people would visit the local sento to wash and then treat themselves to a coffee milk afterwards. <laughs> Some bathhouses also have recliners or massage chairs outside the bathing areas, and larger complexes often have bedrock baths, foot baths, restaurants and more. If you've paid for the deluxe experience, find a floor plan and make the most of what they have to offer. One last important note. If you have tattoos, plan ahead. While things are changing in Japan, slowly, most bathhouses still have a no tattoo policy, so it's best to scout out potential candidates ahead of time to avoid disappointment. If your tattoo is small, you may be able to buy a patch to simply cover it up before going in. For those with sleeves or multiple tattoos, however, it's best to try and find an onsen where it won't be a problem. I hope this onsen overview has been helpful and you go on to discover just how incredible Japanese bathhouses can be. Please give the video a like and subscribe to the channel for more recommendations on making the most of your time in Japan. I'll leave you with a view out over Beppu, one of Japan's most famous hot spring destinations.